Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is November 24th, 2025. That means it's my fifth anniversary as someone who publishes videos on YouTube. But my very first video five years ago was about UiPath apps, and I didn't know much about it at the time, to be honest. And UiPath apps was also in a different place than it is today. Um, but I guess to honor that video, I'm going to do something tonight that I don't know that much about. It's called IXP or the specific flavor of IXP that has to do with complex and unstructured documents. It's going to be a fairly short video, so stay tuned and let's get to it. So UiPath document understanding has for a long time been one of the really strong parts of the platform. Even from the early days when we used like regex extractors and template-based extractors and form-based extractors, stuff that's not even really around anymore, then it kind of turned towards AI. And now we have the modern experience in document understanding where you can extract structured and semi-structured documents with a great deal of precision. So I think it was maybe this past spring or over the summer, they then came out with this new stuff for complex and unstructured extraction. And UiPath kind of showed us this, I want to say a year or a year and a half ago when they had an activity inside of UiPath Studio where you could do a prompt-based extraction. And now they just turned it into a product that is just so much more potent. And I want to take a first look at that in this video. So let's, uh, let's just jump into the platform. Okay, here we are inside my platform. The first thing you need to make sure is that in your menu out here on the left, you have IXP. If you don't have that, you probably want to go into your admin section, uh, select your tenant, go to services, and then add services up here, and then select IXP here, and then select add. But I've already added it, so we don't have to do that now. So I can just select it from my menu. I've also added it as a favorite by selecting this little star, so it's orange. That means it appears up here in the top part where we only have uh, four icons. So here we are inside of IXP, and basically at the top here, we can see the three different flavors of IXP. IXP, by the way, is short for Intelligent Extraction and Processing. And what it basically covers is anything that has to do with extraction of data from chunks of text or documents. And uh, communications data over here on the left is what we've known so far as communications mining, and it is still communications mining. It's just sort of under the IXP umbrella. This is where you can extract intent and content and sentiment from communications data, such as emails and other things. Um, and then over here on the far right, we have structured and semi-structured documents. That's what we've known so far as document understanding, where you basically have a structured or semi-structured document. It could be like an invoice or purchase order, stuff like that. And then we have the, the new kit on the block here in the middle, unstructured and complex documents. It is for basically documents where either you just have a lot of plain text and you need to find some information inside of that document, or you have some documents that have some structure, but that it's just very complex. We're going to have a look at that now. So I'll uh, select that, and then we'll create a project. And I'm just going to call this one flights because I have found a couple of documents that we're going to try and look at in, in our little demo today. So I'll create a blank project. And now basically what I have to do is I need to add some fields that I want to extract. This is sort of like when we do it in document understanding where we uh, use the document type manager to add different fields. We need a purchase order number, we need you know, a purchase order date, and we have a table of fields um, or columns. We need to define that taxonomy, as we call it in the way old days, we need to create that here as well. Actually, they do call it a taxonomy cell. So basically what we can do here, we can add what are called field groups. And field groups are just logical groupings of fields as they would appear in some way, shape, or form inside of a document. And the kind of document we're going to look at today is basically a flight itinerary. And while flight itineraries do have some structure, they are very different from, from vendor to vendor, and we'll see that as well today. So the first thing I'm going to add is a field group, and I'll call this one trip information. And what we'll do then is we'll describe what characterizes this group of fields. So I'll say uh, this group contains general 
fields about the trip, such as ticket number, we'll call it ticket issue, date, traveler name, airline, etc. So it's just a plain text description of what do we expect to find in this group of fields. And I'll click add. And then I'll add another field group. And we're going to call this one flights or flight. This will then contain the different fields that describes a flight. This could be the departure airport, the destination airport, the flight time, the travel class, stuff like that. So we'll just describe that in plain text as well. Sometimes a flight is also referred to as a leg of a trip. So we'll put that in. And click add. So we're just describing these field groups now. And now we can then add fields to each of these groups. So for the trip information, we'll add a field and we'll call it traveler name. The first and last name in that order of the person making a trip. And this is a text field. And this is of type infer text. And I'll get back to what that means in just a, a little bit. I'll click save. And we'll add another field. And this will be my ticket number. The ticket number found on the travel plan. And I will just say that this is a text field. Click save, and then we can create one more field in sort of the trip information uh, field group. And we will call this one booking reference. And I'll just put in the description or the instruction. The booking reference typically consisting of a six character code. And we'll just say that this is also a text field. And then we'll click Save. So now I added some fields to the Trip Information field group. Then I'll go to the Flight field group. And we will say that the first field we want is the Departure Airport. And here we'll say that we want the uh, three character IATA code for the airport, not the name of the city, from where the flight departs. And this is also a text field. And I'll just copy this instruction and save, create another field, and we will call this one arrival airport, and paste in that, except we will change the description so that we can see that it's the destination airport or arrival airport. We'll, we'll call it destination. And also make that a text field. We'll also want to know what date it is, flight date, the date of the flight. I have no imagination when it comes to writing these prompts, so I'll just try and see if this works. And we'll add another field. We can just keep adding fields going down here so we don't have to save every time. And so I will uh, flight time, the departure time of the flight. And we'll just select text for that. And then we can, or we'll save these and then we'll add one more field just for fun. And this will be, I call this time of day. 
and it's really misleading, but I just want to show you something cool about these inferred fields that I talked about a little while ago. And what I'll write in the uh, instruction is, is the flight in the morning, afternoon, evening, or at night? And then I'll click infer text and it will look at the time of day, the actual time of the flight, and then it will hopefully interpret that as either a, a morning, afternoon, evening, or night flight. And I click save. So again, this is probably horrible and it might not even work, but this is, you know, how you go about it. You describe what it is you're looking for and you can group those descriptions in sort of logical chunks. And that means that you can create some very, very complex, I don't want to say structures because they're not, but you can extract some very complex information depending on how, how it's found. So this is our uh, taxonomy for now. And uh, what we'll then do is we'll go back and then we'll need to show it a couple of documents and we'll just show it one document to begin with. So I'll just browse for a document. And on my desktop, I have this folder and there's one called Lufthansa here. And basically it's going to then start processing that document. And it's going to show me then what it found from the description or the instructions that I gave it. It needs to finish processing. It'll just take a, a few seconds here. There we go. So now if I open this uh, Lufthansa uh, PDF, this flight itinerary, then we can see what it found. And this is, this is actually an, an actual flight plan from, from this summer. And what we can see over here in these fields uh, over here is if we look at the trip information, it found out that the, the traveler is me, Yep, yes person. The reference or what it found in the document is yes, yes person, comma, yep, mister. But I told it specifically to write it in the other, you know, uh, first name first and then last name. Um, and that's also an inferred field and not an exact text field. Uh, the ticket number was also found. It is up here at the top. Um, that's found. The booking reference is the six character code. It also found that just from the description. I never showed it this document until you saw me upload it a second ago. So that's sort of the trip information part. And it found one sort of record of that field group type. Now the flight, it found four of those because this flight plan actually contains four flights. So the first one, if we open that, we can see that the departure airport, as we can also see over here in the, in the document, is Copenhagen. The destination airport is Zurich. The flight date is June 30th, and the flight time is 6.40 in the morning. And the time of day, an inferred text field, it says morning. And then we go on to the next flight. That is a flight from Zurich. That is flying from Zurich to Seattle. It found the right airport codes. The date is correct. It was at 1.15 in the afternoon. And so the time of day, it has inferred as the afternoon. And we could then go on to the other flights from JFK to da 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 and that's an afternoon flight and so forth. And it found all of that information just based on our simple, very simple descriptions of how to find information in this not super structured document. So that's how it works really. Now, if we go back here and then upload another document and I have another flight plan from Norwegian and it needs to process that. So we'll just give it a second to do that. There we go. And now we can click the Norwegian document. And when we do that, we should then hopefully see something quite similar. So if we just collapse the flight over here first, um, we can see the trip information. This looks completely different from the first document as we saw. And here we can see that it found the traveler name, that's my son, the ticket number and the booking reference. Although these things are found in completely different places than in the Lufthansa document. And the same with the flights. They are now on each their separate page. I think they are. Yeah, they are. So this one is from Aalborg, which is the regional airport where I live, to Copenhagen, June 29th, 2.40 in the afternoon, and therefore an afternoon flight. And if we go on to the next one from Copenhagen back to Aalborg, the other way around, is on July 22nd at 1.30 in the afternoon. So that is also an afternoon flight. So from, you know, even with my very poor prompting skills, 
I could actually build a model that, at least in these two instances, found what I was looking for. And the thing is, we haven't annotated any of these yet. And annotation here is a little bit different uh, than it is in um, traditional document understanding, if I can call it that, where basically when you uh, annotate stuff, you're helping to train the model. You're not doing that here. When you start annotating uh, things here, and, and we can do that, we can actually say that all of the stuff that it found is correct. We can just validate it by setting these uh, check marks and then submit the annotations. And what this means is we're just telling the model that what it found was right. It's not going to train on that information. It's not going to use that information to anything other than to give itself a score. So if we go back to the other document, now we can see that the Norwegian document has been annotated. If we go into the Lufthansa document and then confirm everything here, we can submit those annotations. And if we go back to the uh, main page, we can now see that that document has been annotated. And what it will do now is it will update itself. So once it has done that, it will then know how good it is based on what it found out and what we confirmed. And it might come out and say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good at this. But if we go into the document, and we'll just do that before this finishes because we're not going to wait. If we go into the Lufthansa document again, it says here that the predictions are outdated. That's because it has actually, well, it actually already gave itself a score of 100%. That's because everything it found was correct. So we'll just rerun the predictions. And it's very, very happy with itself. This model really thinks highly of itself and, and for good reason, because it's really good with, you know, considering how little information it has. If we go back to the Norwegian document, yeah, same thing here, really. But what it would do if it wasn't so happy is that it would show us these exclamation marks out here. And you saw it maybe briefly before the training completed. And what that means is it will show us whether or not it's happy with the prompting that we've created for each of those fields. So if it feels that there's some ambiguity to, you know, what it finds or how the prompt is written or something like that, it will let us know. And that's sort of a different take than what we've seen in traditional or modern uh, document understanding projects is that we're not training the model. <laughs> the model is really training us. So, so, so I think, uh, I think that's really interesting. I'm very optimistic about this. And this is, I know this is sort of structured but it's also sort of complex. So it's probably in the middle ground between complex and unstructured and semi-structured, you know, so, so this is probably somewhere in the middle, but I really like this way of building these models because from our experience, what we've tested with so far is that even the semi-structured documents, we get, we get really good performance out of this way of building the model. So maybe I did live up to that disclaimer that I didn't know that much about what I was talking about, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyways. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. It makes a lot of difference. And if you like this type of video, subscribe to my channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this one.